Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley. I'm an intern architect in Ontario and in today's video we're going to be talking about doing your master's degree in architecture. The things that you should be thinking about and taking into consideration before you make your decision to do your master's degree. So perhaps you've already been accepted to a school but you're unsure if you should go forward with that offer or maybe you're thinking about applying to do your master's degree but you're unsure if you should or should not. So stay tuned and we're gonna go through those factors that you should consider before applying or before making your decision. So the first thing that you should take into consideration before doing your master's is what are your reasons for doing the degree? Are you doing the degree because A, you want to become a licensed architect and that is one of the requirements. I wanted to find myself as a designer um, and really build, really build my skill sets as well. And going to school for me would be an opportunity to really focus in and dial in and find and discover different things, different topics and help me to grow as an individual and also as a designer as well. And so those were my reasonings and also for me becoming a licensed architect was something that I was thinking about as well. So, and you may have additional reasonings as well, so I think it's important to take, to take the time and really think about what are your reasonings to wanting to take the degree. Don't just take the degree for taking the degree. Do have your reasonings and really think out where you want to be after you finish the degree as well so that you're doing it with a purpose and you're doing it mindfully as well. So if you want to become a licensed architect, you have to make sure that the program that you do go is an accredited program so that you're able to then become a licensed architect with that education. So for me, again, I was thinking of it I was starting to think about becoming a licensed architect. I wasn't 100% sure. I thought about it. I felt like after doing my undergrad that I felt a bit incomplete in a way um, and I felt like the next step was to get my license. So, and I thought, okay, I at the same time could really grow as an individual as well. But I knew other people at the time when I was doing my masters that just thought about it as, get in and get out. They were only thinking about it as a way to becoming a licensed architect. And it was just a checklist, a requirement that they needed, and that's all they really wanted was to get in, get the piece of paper, and get out. So for them, it didn't really matter in a way where you end up going, it was, as long as the program is accredited. And of course, for them, what was important was the program would be as short as possible. So that would be something that you would take in consideration if that was your thinking as well. And there's nothing wrong with either one. Everyone's different. Um, I think what's important is to know what you want out of it and to think about it and to be mindful of those reasonings so that that helps you then to make the decision of where you want to go. So just be mindful and think about what are those reasonings and that will help you moving forward if you have been already accepted to a program, then that will help you as well to make that decision or even in your process of applying to schools as well. The second thing that I would think about, and for me it's a big one, is finances. Now this is my personal opinion um, and of course looking back from my experience now, I'm glad I made the decisions that I did and I want to share that with you guys. But of course, in the end, you know what's best for you. You know your situation the best. Now, of course, if you have questions, feel free to comment down below or if you don't want it to be public, you can email me as well. And there's a link to my email on the channel on the about page. So feel free to email me if you have any more questions uh, because I might not be able to get into a lot of details as well. So for me, a huge factor that you should think about when you're going to school and when you're applying is finances. This is huge because whatever happens will influence you after you graduate. Of course, all the factors are important. They will influence, but this is probably the one that will influence you the most. It may hold you back. 
So if you're going into crazy amount of debt, and when I mean crazy, I mean anything over $50,000, uh, let's say uh, 50, over $20,000, I believe that's way too much to spend on your education. Now, if you have the cash at hand and you're able to afford and fully fund your education without going into debt, then so be it. You have that freedom to make that decision. You should go for it. Go for the school that you really want and do it. But if you don't have that luxury to have the cash at hand or have scholarships, to fully fund that experience, then think twice. Really think about it. Now, the other thing you have to think about is living expenses, food, clothing. Clothing, you, you can kind of get away, but you need to survive and live. You're gonna need food, you're gonna need some resources, you're gonna need some money to do printing and supplies. You know, you have to have a bit of a reserve for those items. If all your money is going into the tuition and you haven't considered all the other factors, you need to think about that because you're going to need some books, you're going to need some supplies. Printing is really expensive and that's something that comes with an architecture degree is you have to do a lot of printing for your presentations um, and it's not cheap. It, it really isn't cheap. And then you're going to need modeling supplies because you're going to have to build some models and you're going to need supplies to do that. Uh, or even if you do 3D printing, you have to pay for that as well. So there's all these other things that you need to consider when you're doing your degree. So it's a lot to think about, I know, but you really need to think about the finances, how you're going to fund it. And the reason why I say this is I was presented with the same kind of challenge. I had the time when I applied to, to do my master's. I applied, I believe, I can't remember exactly, but I think I applied to four to five schools or three to five, I, I can't remember exactly. Um, I applied to a few because I wanted to have all my options available to me. And you don't really know what kind of financial aid you'll get until you apply. Because once you get accepted, you're presented with a package. So it's hard to make a decision beforehand. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. So I applied to a few schools and uh, one of them, uh, which was in Southern California. And of course, schools in the States, private schools are super expensive. But I thought, okay, I'll apply. I'll see what kind of financial aid I can get. But the one that I was in really, really indecisive was the Southern California. And I did get a scholarship and it would fully fund my first year uh, of tuition only. I still had to, of course, pay for accommodation and for food but the tuition would be considered, uh, would be fully funded, which was good. But it was only for the first year of my education. And it was a two year program. So the first year was funded, but I really didn't know what the second year would bring. And that to me, I was, I felt like that would be a bit of a risk because I don't know if the second year I can get the funding. And if I did not get that funding, I would not be able to finish my degree. And that's something I did not want to do, is start something and not be able to finish it because I didn't fully think about it and I didn't think about the possibility of not getting a scholarship for the second year. So after a lot of thought and a lot of consideration and I went out looking at the possibility of even borrowing money and I'm glad I didn't go down that route, but. Um, I looked at all the possibilities and considered the fact that I would eventually, if I do borrow that money, I'm going to have to pay it back. Now, if you did also an undergrad and you may have some debt out of that, you have to think about how that will accumulate with a master's degree as well. Now, perhaps you don't have any debt from your undergrad and you're at a clean uh, slate. You may want to think about getting even in more debt. Is that something that you want to do? at? that high of a cost. Now you're talking about, I can't remember at the time how much it was, the tuition was, but I believe in total with accommodation and food, I was looking at $100,000 to fund one year. So the first year I didn't have to worry about tuition. I only needed to worry about food and accommodation, which in California, living expenses is not cheap. Rent is not cheap in California. So that was another thing that I thought about. So when you're thinking about your finances, you gotta think about the location as well because that influences the prices as well. So 
then that led me to really look at my other options of the other schools that was that I was accepted and that le that helped me to make the decision as well now I would not recommend just applying to one school uh, because that it's good to have more than one school so that you can really make the best decision and compare schools with schools and packages as well so that you're able to make the best decision for yourself and at, at the time of applying I had a different mindset and I'm glad that I just applied I went for it and I applied to a few schools and then just made the decision later um, and evaluated everything based on the factors that were important to me when I was making the decision. So make sure you really spend the time to think about the finances. Now, of course, you can apply for scholarships and those are options, but if you're not able to get a scholarship, then, and you're looking at fully doing this yourself, you gotta think twice about it. Now, the reason why, again, I'm making a big deal out of this is because this is a huge issue around the world. In North America especially, the student loan debt is absolutely crazy. In the United States, it's even worse than in Canada uh, because the school and tuition prices are a lot higher. In America, this is a trillion dollar issue with a T, trillion dollar issue. And in Canada, it's a billion dollar issue, about 15 billion with a B, billion dollar issue. So it's a big issue. And one of the issues with student loans is it's a bit of a prison your choices in life will be limited because you have that overhanging debt over you. What do I mean by that? Well, you may want to buy a house, for example, in a few, let's say, two to three years, but you're not going to be able to do that because you're going to have all that student loan debt over your head. It's going to stop you from making certain decisions. So that debt is going to hold you back on opportunities that you may want to do but then decide not to do. So that's important to keep in mind and you need to visualize what it's going to be after you finish your school and how you're going to pay back those loans. I really emphasize how the importance of really thinking about your finances. And now, of course, we're in a unique situation this year because we are in a, a global pandemic. I often think about if I were in the situation of having to start school in September, would I want to go forward with my acceptance? And to be honest, my personal opinion, no, I would not go. And the reason for that is you're investing a lot of money in your education and you're not going to get the full experience. And I really think doing things online isn't the same learning experience as being in a studio with people and it's a different learning environment as well. So I would think twice about it. Um, if it was me, I wouldn't, I would wait. I would apply the following year when perhaps we have a better hold on the current situation. So the third factor that I would take into consideration is the school itself. What does a school have to offer to help you with your goals and dreams um, in your journey in architecture? So what are the facilities that the school offer? Do they have 3D printers, laser cutters? Um, are they versatile? Do they, what research topics do they have? What is the program known for? So make sure to do a bit of research of each school, which will then help you later on on the application process but that will also help you to find what's best for you and what suits you um, for in terms of a program. Now, it's important when you're doing research on the school to also research the faculty member. When I applied, I did some research on the faculty member. I looked into what are their research topics? Do my interests align with their interests? And is there enough variety? And if you don't know what are your research interests or what you're interested in architecture in terms of the different topics, then is there enough of a variety that you can pick and choose from and learn from as well? So that's something important to take into consideration when you are applying. So I would also, when you're researching the school, look into the facilities that they offer as well. Now, architecture buildings are notorious to always being 
the worst buildings on campus but uh, one of the schools that has one of the nicest facilities I have to say is UFT they just got a new architecture building and it looks awesome so I look at that and I'm like wow if I was a student that would be a dream to study in that building but of course you can't just look at the facilities you know you gotta take all these other things into consideration but the facilities might be something that you want to look into as well so the fourth factor that I would take into consideration is apply and decide later so I talked a little bit about this in the first factor but apply and when I mean apply don't apply to one or two schools apply to a few schools I remember when I was trying to make this decision I was overwhelmed where should I go Oh, where to apply and what made me feel better about the decision is I really can't make a decision if I haven't applied there's nothing to really decide about you need to apply lay your cards out and then decide later so apply and decide later so you can't really make a full decision if you don't have all the facts in front of you and that's why it's important to apply to more than one school so that you could evaluate uh, the packages that you receive of acceptance. So for, so for example, one school may offer you a full ride. They may pay for your expenses, your tuition and everything versus another school. So it's important in order to make that decision to have options and the more options, the better you can make that decision as well. And don't worry about it. I wouldn't worry about it. The only thing I would worry about is applying and then you'll make that decision when that decision comes. And you don't know if you're gonna get in or not. So what's the point of stressing out about it before applying? So just apply and then decide. So the fifth factor that I would consider is you need to plan and prepare. So once you've decided that you are gonna apply, you need to plan and prepare your course of action. So figure out which schools you're gonna apply and don't think about too much about it. I would apply to a variety of them and as much as you can because I do understand there is a fee associated to each application. So list down the schools and if you're able to afford to apply to five, then go for it. So figure out those schools, figure out the requirements for each one. So for sure you're going to need a portfolio and some schools have you know, different requirements and others are very similar. Then do your research for each one because you should do a bit of research because that will also influence your portfolio as well. And then of course, write down the deadlines for each school because each school is going to have a different submission deadline for your application. So do that and list the requirements for each one and then begin to plan your course of action and really carve out the time and you should be doing that almost every day working on that portfolio. I spent close to a year preparing my portfolio for my master's degree so I would really recommend spending that time on your portfolio and spending each time so when I would get off of work I would go to the library or go to a computer lab and work on my portfolio each day I would chip away at it so take the time to spend on your portfolio and I would recommend doing it each and every day a little bit and then spending even more time on the weekend so that I found for myself by working on it each and every day and dedicating a project let's say per month or a few projects uh, within that month that I wouldn't lose focus and sight of my goal to apply to the schools. So that was important for me to build that momentum. So depending on where you're at as well with your portfolio of course each one is different but I do recommend spending that time. It really shows when you spend that time on your portfolio so do do that so there you have it guys those are the five factors that i would take into consideration when you're deciding to do your master's degree or when you're deciding to accept that offer to the school think about it be mindful but of course remember these are my personal opinions and perspectives and of course they vary from individual to individual so remember that but hopefully this gave you some insight and some perspective on the things that you should take into consideration when you're applying for school. And I hope this was helpful for you. If it was helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for future videos. I hope to see you guys next time, and thank you so much. Bye.